good morning, or I guess good afternoon now. Um, it is um, July the 10th, a Friday. Um, if uh, you are watching this and you are a uh, woman of any age, um, there is the hit party tonight at 6.30. And it's going to be a fun time. They have tea and coffee and all kinds of fun stuff. A, a great lesson prepared. Um, just a good time uh, to get out and hang out. And uh, I know that they always have fun. And don't worry, those guys won't be there. Um, I, uh, I went on a bike ride this morning. And I went uh, up that road. Um, it's the Charlie Lee Relief Route. Um, up towards Cloudcroft, that, that road. Man, I tell you what, that I thought I was going to die. Oh, man. I, uh, I, I'm really glad that I went so early in the morning because I just know that there were probably some people laughing at me. Like, <laughs> look at that guy. Um, anyways, uh, I, before we, I, 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 we're gonna just do a real short, uh, Devo today, um, but before we do that, uh, I wanted to just spend a couple minutes, um, praying for you guys, so, uh, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to be peacemakers in the midst of the, just different situations that are going on right now, um, help us to remember that we've got a, a higher purpose in life, we've got a higher, um, calling in life than just petty arguments and, and anxiety and those kinds of things. Help us to see that those are the struggles. That's not who we are, though. You, you're calling us somewhere. You're calling us to to do, Lord, and help us not to get blindsided by all the problems that are surrounding us and to help us to be the voice of reason and uh, to be the voice who lifts up other people, um, not the one who is going um, trampling others. And, uh, Lord, help us to see people like you saw people where the Jews were avoiding Samaria but instead in 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 the book in the book of Luke you, you tell us about how you went straight through to Samaria help us to see people like that god okay so uh i was reading in Luke chapter 11 and there is something here that kind of made me laugh at first and then i realized how uh, much it applies <laughs> And I wasn't laughing anymore. It says Luke chapter chapter 11 in verse 45. It says, now he, he's going through all these different things, telling the Pharisees, you know, in verse 42, for instance, he says, Woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the, lo lo um, and the law of God. I'm sorry, the love, justice and the love of God. Um, and then so all, all he's going through these different things, saying to the Pharisees these different things. And then in verse 45, it says this. One of the lawyer, one of the lawyers answered him, "Teacher, in saying these things, you insult us also." <laughs> At first, I thought it was funny, but then I started realizing how much this applies. So they were okay. They were okay with God not liking those people that they didn't like. They were okay with God judging and condemning someone else. <laughs> that that's fine. <laughs> But then when it got to be something that they were also doing, it was like, whoa, 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 I thought we were, I thought we were all agreed that we just don't like the Pharisees. You know, and, and even even nowadays, this, we see people that are maybe real legalistic will um, think that they're better than everybody else. And uh, we think, oh, hey, man, that, that's awesome that, that God, you know, wants to, wants to correct them. But then when it's something about it, it's like, whoa, hold on, God, don't you know that you're offending me too? And, uh, you know, it, okay... If God doesn't like those people I don't like, then we're all good. But uh, the moment that he starts saying something about how I need to change, it's like, oh, well, this is a different story. And uh, Jesus goes on in verse 46 to say, and he said, woe to, woe to you uh, lawyers also. It's like, oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I, I thought we were just all agreed that we don't like this group of people. Um, and uh, kind of this idea of, you know, Jesus agrees with all my views. Isn't it so nice that I'm so enlightened that every view that I hold, that he agrees with me? Um, and he never says anything that offends me, never says anything that I have to change. Um, it, 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 we get to a place where we, where we say, it, we, it's not, we don't say this anymore. What does God have to say to me as I pray and read my Bible? What, what is God going to tell me? What, what things am I going to have to give up to grow closer to him? What things... Um, should I give up to not have anxiety, not have depression, um, or at least get a handle on them? 
And, uh, you know, it, it's not that. Instead, we go with this, God, thank you that I'm not like them. You know, and, and, and once again, in the Bible, there's a story where Jesus is telling about this real religious guy that's praying. And he says, God, thank you that I'm not like this sinner. And meanwhile, the sinner is just saying, Lord, please just have mercy on me. And I, I feel like we kind of do the same things. That, God, thank you that I'm not an ignorant moron like this guy. Thank you that I'm not like one of these super religious, um, self-righteous people. You know, it's like, well, may, maybe we've lost uh, the whole point here. Um, I, and this is just something that caused me to, caused me to really uh, question my heart a lot. And this is some of the questions that I ask myself. What if the God that I serve isn't really God? So there's kind of two two things I mean with that. The first thing, what if it's me? What if I've made myself my own God of my life? I, I answer to myself. I believe what I want. I make other people subject to me. And then the second aspect of this, what if the God that I serve isn't really God, is, is this, what if I'm serving an imaginary God, a God that, that isn't really God? What if I have tamed God and stuck him in a box uh, to make him easy to manage, um, like all my other accessories in my life. You know, here's my, here's my hobbies that I like doing. Here's my God. I, I take him out every once in a while to, you know, rub his hair, and then I put him back in the box and I put him up. What, what if the God that I'm serving isn't really the God of the Bible? Isn't really the God that has revealed Himself in the Bible, but rather the God that I want to believe in, the God that I, that, the God that fits what I think God should be, where he validates all my, all my beliefs. He constantly strokes my ego, but then everybody else is wrong because they're not like me. So therefore, I must be right. Therefore, God must agree with me. And it kind of gets to be this thing of it's, what if that God that I'm serving isn't the real God? And when I'm reading the Bible, oftentimes I find that that God isn't the God that I've made up in my own imagination. I, I, I like to think that God is always on, you know, always on my side. He always agrees with what I'm doing. And all my enemies, they're the wrong ones. They're the ones who, aren't, who need to change. But we don't really see that. And especially like the story that I just read in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 45, where, where the lawyers say, hold on, don't you know that you're offending us also? See, we want to think, okay, I have a special connection with God. I don't need to change. Everybody else needs to change. I understand things. I don't have to, I don't have to listen to other people. I don't have to uh, be under authority. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to read my Bible. I just have this special understanding with God. And then God says something that we need to change. And it's like, oh, hold on, hold on. I thought we all agreed that those are the people that we don't like. And a lot of the times... I find that the things that rub me the wrong way from the Bible are things that don't fit my idea of what I want God to be like. And that's hard to get out of. If God is doing nothing that upsets me, I might not be listening. I'll say that one again. If God is doing nothing that upsets me in life, I might just not be listening. Because God's going to say things that upset me. There, there's going to be times that I'm wrong. Um, it, it's really hard nowadays because of, of social media and everything. It seems like it seems like bad ideas are just kind of on the rise, and nobody wants to listen. Everybody just wants to vent. So you go on Facebook, you leave this really long status about how everybody else is an idiot, and you're wrong. I mean, and you're right. And, I mean, just look at, for instance, some of the things that are going on right now. A good majority of them could be solved just by listening. And yet we refuse to listen because I've already made up my mind that I'm right. And God supports me because that my view is right, so therefore it must be God's view. And that is the problem, that I have deified myself. And the God that I serve is no longer God because I've said, no, God, I'm not going to listen to any of your criticism. You just always had to validate me and prove that my ideas are right. Right now, if you look anywhere, you'll see that there's just a bunch of racial tension in the news and stuff on Facebook, everywhere. And everybody wants Jesus to be on their side. You know, Jesus would have been this. He would have been this. Jesus was a socialist. Jesus was a fill-in-the-blank. I mean, whatever whatever your side is, whatever your argument is, that's what we always want to believe that Jesus is. 
And, I mean, take, for instance, the racial tensions that's going on right now. You have some people saying all lives matter, and you have some people saying black lives matter. And the thing is, I have good friends on both sides. And I have white friends that stand on both sides. I have black friends that stand on both sides. And honestly, I don't even know what to do with this. It's something where there is no easy answer, but we all like to pretend like there's an easy answer. Like somehow we can just resolve it. And maybe it's more complicated than that. I mean, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. So some people say all lives matter, and I'm not going to say that I disagree with that. <laughs> but yet, Jesus left the 99 to find the one lost. What about the 99? Don't all the sheep matter? See what I mean? It, it wasn't the 99 that needed the doctor. It was the one lost one that needed the shepherd. It, so in a way, all lives matter isn't sufficient, but then you have black lives matter, right? Jesus came, and there were slaves in his day, and yet he didn't come as a social justice warrior. He didn't come righting all of, of, of the civil wrongs. So what do you do with that? See, once again, it's, a, it's something that doesn't have an easy solution. It's something that you can't just say, this is what Jesus would do. It's... It's harder than that. And what's even more confusing is it's e easier to stereotype. I know some people who say that all lives matter and they are genuine Christians. I know some people who say that black lives matter and they are genuine Christians. What do you do with that? It's easier when one side is demonized. These people are clearly wrong. They're just idiots. And now I know who the bad guy is. And so now we can all get together and agree that this person is wrong. Like the lawyer in Luke chapter 11, verse 45, where he says, now hold on, Jesus, don't you know that you're offending us now too? Because Jesus wasn't saying things to ally himself with a certain um, political group. He was saying things to, to reach people in their hearts. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. We want God to be this guy that's always behind my views. He's always supporting my beliefs. And we don't want to have to think or change. We just want God to unconditionally support our views and for our views to be divine. But what if we're wrong about something? And obviously I'm not saying that there's an easy solution. I'm not saying one or the other. I, I'm, I'm not trying to make up your mind for you. I'm not trying to tell you that, that I have all this understanding. What I am trying to say is, is it's more complicated than we're making it. Maybe Jesus was neither of those groups. Or maybe he was both. Or maybe he was more than those groups can possibly contain. I don't know. But I'm willing to admit that I don't know. Uh, there's this, this kind of thing that we have to do in life. And then when we're reading the Bible and when we're, when we're approaching problems in, in life, don't go to it with your mind already made up. This is what I've already chosen to believe. I refuse to admit that anything is, 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 is beyond this idea of how I understand it. Don't go to it with your mind already made up. We all have opinions. If you've been on Facebook in the last three months, you know. Everybody has opinions. And another problem is that nobody wants to listen to other people's opinions. We just want everybody to listen to our opinions. I mean, take, for instance, the Facebook rant, where we take, you know, five paragraphs talking about this thing that's irritating us, and we want everybody to read it, and we want everybody to agree with us. We want to persuade all of our friends to that we are right, and they've been wrong all this time. But... <laughs> It doesn't really work like that. And, you know, rather than listening to other people and trying to encourage other people, we're trying to just get our point of view out there. And we're just trying to get people to hear us. We want everybody to know that, you know, our views of the president or our views of the governor or our views of, you know, masks or our views of, of the racial tension situation. And it's none of it is based on building each other up or listening. It's just more like this. You're an idiot if you don't agree with my point of view. And I think that maybe we're, we're missing a good opportunity to learn and a good opportunity to grow. And we're allowing ourselves to be too easily offended. No, I will not listen because you don't agree with, my, agree with, with what I've already chosen to believe. Everybody thinks they are right and every, everybody else is wrong. It's just something that, that that's out there. And we need to face this head on because check it out. Sometimes you're going to be partially right. And sometimes you're going to be mostly right. But very, very rarely will you ever be 100% wrong and 100% right. 
or 100% right. Very, very rarely. That, that usually isn't going to happen. Usually you're going to be a little bit right and a lot wrong, or a lot right and a little bit wrong. Yeah. Here's another, another thing that people say, oh, everyone should vote. And I'm not saying that voting's wrong. That voting's a really good idea, especially in a government-type situation that we live in. We don't have emperors that just come in and say, hey, yeah, I'm going to rule you. Uh, we have people who are elected, which is a good thing, except for when they don't do uh, what they were elected to do. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, this whole everybody should vote, okay, all right, that, that, that's, a, that's an idea, but here's the problem, is that we shouldn't put our trust in people. We shouldn't put our faith in people. We shouldn't put our, our belief in a politician. It just, I mean, the Bible talks about it when it says, don't, don't put your trust in princes and, 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 and the rulers of men, just don't, don't put your trust in them. Um, there's lots of reasons for it. Uh, first off, because God's the one who's really in control. Second off, because when somebody dies, their their ideas usually die with them. And, I mean, it gives a bunch of different reasons, but you can read that for yourself. Um, so we should, okay. Uh, you know, everybody should tell us that we should vote. You know, we shouldn't put our trust in people. Okay. But one thing that we do is, is we kind of do this whole, my guy is right and your guy's an idiot. And I think that this is pretty unhelpful. So let me give you kind of an example. Trust my guy because my liar is better than your liar. Okay. Uh, he's the lesser of two evils. It's like, well, those are some bad options there. Um, and I mean, I, I understand that most of the time that is what's going to happen, but there has to be a point when we don't just agree with somebody just because he's the guy that I'm voting for. There has to be a certain level where we say, I'm not going to agree with everything that this guy does. There has to be a point when we say, I'm not just going to discredit everybody else because they have a different opinion. There has to be some kind of, of healthy respect. And a lot of the times what we do is we don't like to respect people like Jesus respected people. But then we want everybody to treat us better than Jesus himself was treated. And that, again, is a little unhelpful. Jesus hang out with, hung out with sinners. Um, and get this, while he's hanging out with the, these, these people who, the worthless people, the, the people that everybody looks down on, the people who don't deserve it, at the same time, he has these different judgments for these spiritual leaders, the, the popes of their day, right? The people who are these, are, these are the real spiritual elites. Those are the ones that Jesus was, was condemning. Now, the thing about the Pharisees is Jesus and the Pharisees actually shared a lot of the same beliefs. But what they didn't share was their heart for people. Which is ironic, because Jesus, being God, um, was the one who gave the law. And yet he loved the people whose sake the law was given, whereas the Pharisees loved the law as though people were made for the sole purpose of the law. And there's just a big difference there. Jesus wanted people to change. Not just the Pharisees, not either this group or that group, not, oh, Republicans are idiots, or Democrats are idiots, or people who voted for this guy are idiots, or if you wear a mask, you're an idiot, or if you don't wear a mask. Jesus wanted people to change. He wanted their hearts to be changed. He wanted them to have an encounter with God. And I think that that must mean that we as Christians... Jesus' followers, that surely we might, we should have a similar opinion. That, it, you know, it doesn't matter what your stance is about, you know, masks or the governor or the president or the racial tensions. We need to have an encounter with God. That that has to be our driving passion. Because as much as as important it is as it is to you that you that you give your rant on Facebook, it's more important that people have a real life encounter with God. That's just that's just more important. It's just infinitely more important. It's it's easier to just just decide how we want to live and believe and then demand God to share our views. It's easier to make fun of people who don't agree with us. These are just easier things to do. But when you approach God, go to him with the purpose of listening. God, I I don't come to tell you. I don't, I don't come to have you validate my beliefs. God, I just come to listen. Change my heart, God. J change my heart. Help me to have a heart for people. Help me to love people like you loved people. 
even to the point of death. Paul says this in Romans. He says, some people might dare to even die for a, a, a good person. But Jesus died for everyone, even the no good sinners, even the people that nobody likes, even the people who voted for this guy, even the people who have opinions that disagree with your opinions about the masks or the governor or about different things like that. Jesus wasn't into the factions that we try and make all around us. My group is infinitely right. Your group is infinitely wrong. That We don't see Jesus doing that. But what we do do, and do do he, is we try and uh, make it where we are always right. It's like we have just severe narcissism and our egos can't handle a blow of being wrong. So what we try and do is we try and make whoever the other people are, they're the hypocrites. They need to change. Instead of we need Jesus, it's no, you need Jesus because you need to have your opinion changed because it doesn't match my opinion. So the, the, the challenge there is, is pretty simple. Listen. Learn to listen. When people are talking, not just what they're saying, but the emotions that they have behind what they're saying. Chances are there's a reason why people feel like that. Learn to, well, learn. Learn to be able to grasp the idea that you might be wrong. Uh, admit you have faults. I mean, these are just basic basic things that we've been overlooking a lot for this whole whew, past couple of months. And then here's just a, a, a thought. Don't spend five hours on Facebook in one second thinking about reading the Bible. I might read the Bible later if I get around to it. Meanwhile, I've been on Facebook for, you know, off and on all day. It's like, well, kind of unhelpful. Uh, you know, there were many factions in Jesus' day, but he refused to get sucked in. There were some people called the Zealots, uh, the Jewish Zealots. They were, they were um, how would you describe them? Um, Anti-government radicals. Um, they believed that the Romans just needed to be done away with, overthrown, kicked out, killed, slaughtered, whatever. And, uh, in fact, one of Jesus' disciples was a zealot. It says that uh, so-and-so, I forgot what his name is, the zealot, the, the, the radical. And uh, I would say that he, he, he uh, changed <laughs> because we know that he didn't change Jesus' mind. And people do really the same thing now. If you don't get behind my cause, you are part of the problem and I hate you. You don't know how many times I've heard that in the past two months. If you don't get get behind my cause, then you are part of the problem, and I hate you. It's like, well, you shouldn't hate anybody, first off, and then second off, even if somebody disagrees with you, you shouldn't hate them. And then third off, seeing that somebody's part of the problem just because they don't agree with you might be a little bit limited in your understanding of the problem. If you support one thing... You, you you tend to get heat from others about the other thing. And so you kind of... It's kind of hard to voice your opinion on stuff anymore because you'll just be demonized. But then there's another thing that's even worse. It's not just about what you believe anymore. It's about what people want you to believe. It's about, you know, they want people want their opinions coming from your mouth. And it's hard to learn how to... How to not get sucked in. Everything's gotten so divided so either or you know either you agree with me and you're right or you don't agree with me and you're just a wrong idiot sometimes both views are, are correct in some things i'm not saying relativism but in some things from a certain point of view um you know some things just aren't mutually exclusive and we've made them mutually exclusive like here's an example when some people hear black lives matter they just instantly translate it in their head and they say something like this they're saying that only black lives matter or the black lives matter more than other lives. And then some people, when they hear all lives matter, they, they, trans, they, they translate that in their head like this. These people are saying that black lives don't matter. See, but saying black lives matter isn't saying that other lives don't matter. And saying all lives matter isn't saying that black lives don't matter. But the problem is these things have now become, they're mutually exclusive. And they're not, they're not really mutually exclusive. They're actually just, they're, they're both saying the same thing. They're both right. It's just two different views. And you see what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's, we've made something to be more and more divided about rather than trying to bring unity. And I think that that's why it's even more important that, that, that we try so hard to be peacemakers. Create peace where there isn't peace. Because everybody's trying to spread strife. Everybody wants their view to be the only view. And, and we need to learn how to tolerate each other again. We need to, to learn how to tolerate people having different opinions than us. And uh, not everything is 
either or. If you don't agree with me, you are wrong. I mean, look at, look at, for instance, politicians. I agree with some things of what this person says and does, and I agree with some things of what this person says and does, but I don't agree with everything that either of them say and do. See what I mean? Things just aren't as black and white as, as people often make it out to be. In life in general, things aren't just so clear-cut. But we shouldn't ignore the bad of one thing because we support it while emphasizing the bad of the other thing because we don't support it, and there's many different applications for that. Um, I, I think that you guys kind of get what I'm saying. Let me just say this, last the last little bit here. Um, this is kind of really just absolutely important. We have to learn how to love and serve and put others before ourselves. See, it was easy to love and serve people back before all this stuff blew up, back before we were all on edge from being in quarantine, all this stuff. Now now we've kind of gotten on edge. So now it's a little bit harder. And this is the test as to whether we truly love and, and are really serving people when things are so divided and everybody has such a strong opinion that goes against your opinion and you're still willing to put them first. That is the test of whether we have we really do love these people, or if we've just been lying to ourselves for the past couple of years. So I, I hope that um, I hope that there is something here for you. Um, like I say, I'm not trying to start a problem. I'm not trying to tell you one view is better than the other. I'm just trying to say this: look, peace isn't going to just happen on accident. Like, oh, I woke up one day and everything's just going smoothly. It's going to be something we have to fight for. Love isn't something that you just wake up one morning and you just love people. It's going to be something that you have to deal with these annoying things, these people who you see as idiots, and you're just going to have to keep forgiving and keep serving them, and then gradually you just let your heart be changed. It's not something that's easy, but it's something that's necessary. And I think that when we stop demanding things be understood how we understand them and we start budging a little bit and we start putting others before ourselves i think that that'll be um putting us uh in the right direction and i i hope you guys have a great weekend really i do um i i hope you guys have a great time uh next week vbs starts up for the kids um uh, don't don't let this stuff going on uh with the different restaurants and stuff get you down uh just go for a walk, you know, maybe turn off your phone for a bit. Don't disconnect from people, but maybe disconnect from Facebook for a bit. There's just a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of opportunities to get um, upset. Uh, so really, guys, have, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll hope to see you on Sunday.